one thing that, and you will see why, really one made me uh, or amazed me is together with her husband, she completed a 300 kilometer coast to coast backpacking trail in the north part of England. And the best part, she's still awed by the way that God would bring this ultra shy, this is how he described it, <laughs> introverted child as she was, to this incredibly exciting ministry for the family, women, and children's ministry at the Trans-European Division. And the last thing, uh, which is something that I prepared for you here, she loves chocolate, especially dark chocolate. So thank you for that amazing welcome. Yes, my parents are in awe that I do this job because when I was a child, I used to hide in cupboards at church so people didn't talk to me. So they say, what? You go and talk to people around the world and stand on stages. And yes, it still scares me silly, but I'm here. And I'm here to talk about a culture of care, creating a care culture because this is something that I'm so passionate about. How do we make God's love real in our churches? And I wonder for you, can you remember a time when you were particularly cared for by somebody? Uh, maybe somewhere at church, maybe somewhere else. Um, several years ago, my retina detached, which is a pretty scary thing to have happen. It's when you suddenly realize that one of your eyes is slowly going black blind and I didn't know what was going on. I went to the hospital and they say, well, we'll have to repair it straight away so you don't go completely blind and they, they did a really good job. But one of the things about having eye surgery, particularly having your retina reattached, is you have to stay awake. I have no idea why they make you do this, but you're awake while they operate on your eye. And when I went into the operating theater, I had a really wonderful surgeon and he said to me, we have this lady here. She is just here in this operating theater to hold your hand. It's like, wow. You know, this is the NHS in England. They're short of money, they're short of staff. And they provide a person on New Year's Eve during a flu epidemic, it was before the pandemic, when they were short of staff, just to hold my hand. And I cannot tell you how wonderful that experience was to have this complete stranger hold my hand throughout that operation. And once I got over the initial <laughs> shock of what is happening to me, and I held her hand, I thought, wow, her hand is the hand of God. I can hold the hand of God here, it's her hand. And someone is caring for me at a deeply traumatic and terrifying moment of my life, a complete stranger. And that care is just incredible. So why is care culture important? Well, it's the way, it's the way that God's love is made tangible. Because I can love with all my heart, my husband or, or God or whoever. But if it's just in my heart and I don't do anything with it, how does anybody know that it's there? God's love is real in the space between us. When two people love and come together and do something with that love, it's shown, it's visible. The love is seen in the way that we interact. It's not just in our hearts. So when we live out God's love in His, in, in His care in the space between us, we create care culture in our relationships. Love was not put in our hearts to stay. Love is not love till we give it away, till people can see it in the space between us. And as we've heard so many times while we've been here, Jesus says, let me give you a new command. Love one another in the same way I loved you. Think about that, that's awesome. How Jesus loved us, love one another. And this is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. And sometimes we forget in the 10 commandments that there is this new commandment, this commandment to love, which is bigger than everything. And he says, love God and love others on these two loves, 
then you can hang the law on the prophets. Then they are in their right places. So what makes a care culture? Well, before we can really build and nurture a caring community, we need to understand what does caring mean to the people who are part of the community? Because it's not just, I care about you in my heart. It's what do we do with that? What does it mean to be a Christ-centered community with Christ at the heart, his love at the heart of everything we do? My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. And this is how God showed his love for us. He sent his only son into this world so that we might live through him. No one has seen God ever. But if we love one another, God dwells, dwells deeply within us. His love becomes complete in us. Can you imagine that? God's love becomes complete in us when we love one another. That's awesome. We, though, are going to love. Love and be loved. First, we were loved by God. That's the only way we know how to love, is to experience his love for us. And then when we've experienced that love, then we can love. He loved us first. So what does love look like? What does love do? Well, it does many things. Love comforts. Love accepts the other person, no matter what. Love is caring and affectionate. It shows appreciation and gratitude. It gives us their full attention, shows us respect, lifts us up with dignity, encourages us, helps us to feel safe and valued and precious, and it supports us. Love does things. And Paul told us these things every time he said one another, do this for one another. He was saying, this is what love looks like. This is how you do the love stuff. This is how you create a care culture. And I think Paul was so passionate about that because he was planting little groups of people, little care cultures here and there, and he needed them to be sustainable. They needed to know how to have healthy relationships because if they didn't, they would quickly fall apart. If you came to my seminar on conflict today, you would hear that 60% um, of the people who leave our church cite conflict as the main reason why they leave. And so we need to create spaces where people feel loved and cared for. And the opposite of love is not hate, it's actually loneliness, disconnection, feeling all alone. Instead of being comforted, we hurt people and judge them, we reject them, abuse them, criticize them, ignore them, shame them, discourage them, make them feel afraid, put them down, and abandon them. And they're all the things that do not belong in a care culture. They do not have any part in the care culture, the love of Jesus culture in our lives. Whenever we connect with love and do one of these things on the far side, it's like a strand goes between us and we are joined. And as those strands connect and we do more of those things, our bonds become stronger. But if someone does something on this side, it's like they take a huge pair of scissors, they cut all those bonds. We have to start all over again and it's much harder the second time. So one way of understanding this also is we have what, what I call, this is what I made up, this compassion cycle. And we know that when people care for us, we feel cared for, that oxytocin, dopamine, lovely glowy hormones are released into our body that help us to feel loved and safe and joyful and peaceful and all those good things. And when they, that happens, we're better able to care for others. We can listen to them, we can empathize with them and be compassionate. So as we care for others, then they also experience this wonderful hormone release and they're better able to care for us too. And so we have a cycle of care and as we bless and care each other, um, that cycle can grow as we show care, we enable other people to show care. But there's also a distress cycle and this is what happens if we do the things on the, this list on this side that I showed earlier. When we don't care for people, or people don't feel cared for by God and us, then their stress hormones are released. And it's so hard for them then to empathize, to listen, to care. And then they become um, more, we hurt other people when that happens, with our actions and our words, because we can't really think 
about them and just thinking about taking care of ourselves, not about other people. And as we hurt people, then of course, that happens to them too. So let's avoid those things that destroy this wonderful care culture that God is building within us. Paul has a quick guide to care cultures in Romans 12. I love this chapter. As a systemic therapist, family therapist, I find that the core of what I believe in is in this chapter. So we're all parts of the body of Christ and all those parts work together to heal and care for the other parts. And we are all uniquely gifted to bless this community. When we use our gifts, the care culture is strengthened. And then after describing this caring, connected community, Paul gives us some amazing tips of what that looks like. What does the care culture look like? And so in Romans 12, 9 to 18, he says, love genuinely, love from the center of who you are. And when we are filled up with God's love, when that's the love in our hearts, then that will pour out naturally into the relationships around us. So God's love pours into us so that we can love others authentically. Be friends, be good friends who love deeply. So take that love and use it in your relationships to be good friends that care and pass on the care culture. Be humble and respectful to others. Make it okay not to be the number one. Help others to go first, empower them. Don't burn out, stay inspired. Be alert servants of the master. Um, cheerfully expectant, hopeful, looking for the best, positive. Pray, don't quit in the hard times, just pray all the harder. Help others, help needy Christians, he says. Be creative with your hospitality and bless your enemies. What amazing care culture that is, that we can take the care we have and use it to bless those around us who hurt us. No casting under our breath, pure blessing and goodness. And then he says, laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Join them in their joy and join them in their sorrows. Share tears with them. If there's nothing else you can do, just sit with them. I have sat with people and just cried because there were no words. And when you think about Job's friends, they were great comforters when they were quiet, when they opened their mouths, they made a big mess of it. So just being still with people who are sad, crying with them, letting them know you care and they are not alone is an amazing expression of God's love. Make friends with nobodies, don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone because every single person is made in the image of God and we can look for the wonder in them. And then he says, and if you've got it in you, because maybe we don't all have it in us, but if we do, get along with everybody. Try to live peacefully with those that you can, he says. So how do we create a care culture? What are some of the principles that we can take that Paul also has given us and other writers of the New Testament? First of all, I think we need to create a safe space. Because if the space where we're caring for others, our church, our communities, whatever they are, are not safe places, how can we bring someone in there who's suffering and hurting? So we need to first create a safe place where our love Cast out fear. People have nothing to fear when they're with us. So be confidential, have a zero tolerance for bullying. And I wonder what our churches would look like if we did have a zero tolerance of bullying. Acceptance. Accept one another as Christ has accepted you. Think about that one. As Christ has accepted you, that is how you are to accept others in order to bring praise to God, says Paul. Wow. Accepting one another, it's fine when we're, you know, we're all great and wonderful, but I learned about acceptance when I crashed my husband's car. And um, fortunately, he'd learned about acceptance first. It wasn't a big crash, I just, I backed into a parking space, and I'm sure it was perfectly empty when I started, but suddenly there was a massive, metal skip for collecting rubbish and I have it got there in two seconds is beyond me but I hit it and so I went home with a dent in the back of the car and I said to my husband I'm really sorry I bumped your car and um, he took a deep breath like I could see things going through his mind but he'd heard about this verse and he learned that my wife is more important than my car 
And so he accepted me, and that was very wonderful. Yes, give him a clap. <laughs> I am so grateful he learned that lesson. So welcome diversity and accept those with messy lives and even those who bump your car because we accept one another as Christ has accepted us. And then respect one another, honour one another above ourselves. And I love this how Paul says it, above yourself. Because if we treat people as if they're just a little bit higher than us and we look up to them and honour them, then we all get lifted up. But if we start to look down on people, then you all get dragged down. So show respect for different ideas, opinions, personalities. Show empathy. This wonderful verse about rejoicing with those who rejoice and mourning with those who mourn. Show that you care for people, that you understand their feelings, listen to them, and share in each other's ups and downs of life. Because when that happens, we feel truly cared for. When people come and sit with us in our distress and rejoice with us when we celebrate, we feel cared for, connected. Focused attention. Everyone, says James, should be quick to listen and slow to speak. When we really listen to people, it's an amazing gift that builds a care culture. People feel special. We can really hear of them. We can be curious about their stories, their needs, and then we know better how to care for them when we understand what their stories are. Kindness. Love one another as I have loved you. This is one of the most powerful character strengths uh, that there is, because when people are kind, then all sorts of other good things fall into place. Love one another as I have loved you. Because when we are kind to people, we, we create a community of care, care culture. When we're always thinking, what can I do for someone in this community, this group, this congregation, whoever they are, right now, how can I be kind to someone every time I go to the church, go to the youth group, go to this place? So we can spread kindness um, because it's such a, a gift of love. Um, support and help one another. Um, Paul says, bear one another's burdens. So don't let people struggle alone. Do things in teams because when people feel unsupported, they often feel unloved, they feel discouraged, they want to give up helping. But if we come alongside and help people who are struggling, then it's so much better when we do those tasks together. Appreciation. Thank the people around you. And every time we thank someone, we feel happy and so do they. It is an amazing gift. There was some research done when they um, assessed how happy people were when they came into uh, a research project. So they took note of how happy they were and then they gave them a gratitude task. They said, think of someone in your past that you really want to thank. So they thought of the person and then they said, we want you to write a letter of gratitude to this person. So they wrote the letter. And then they said, now call them up and read them the letter. And they did this task. And at the end of this task of thanking someone, everyone was happier than when they started. And the person whose happiness had increased the most was the person who was saddest when the experiment started. So, Gratitude always lifts us up, gives us joy, gives the other person joy. And did you know that the more you thank the people around you, the less likely they will argue with you. So, you know, that's worth a try. So encouragement, let us spur one another towards love, encouraging one another, encouraging each other towards positive goals and caring for each other. Someone once called me up and said, Karen, I just called you up to encourage you. But wow, I could use a bit of encouragement, that would be really nice. When has someone called me up to encourage me before? And then they spent an hour on the phone telling me everything they thought I ought to do that I wasn't. Did I feel encouraged? No, I think that was probably the most discouraging phone call I ever had. Encouragement is encouraging people towards the goals they already have for themselves. Um, and so encouraging one another is really helping them to reach their goals the way where they want to go and supporting them in the process of achieving their dreams. 
And I wonder what else you'd put there. There are so many principles we could put into a care culture. And Paul was passionate about this. He really wanted people to experience love. He talks about it so often and all the ways that we can build relationships by doing this for one another. So in the space between us, we can see the care culture, the love of God, apparent, visible, tangible in the space between us. So what other values would your group suggest? You can ask them, what should we put into our care culture? How can we create care culture right here, where we are, in this youth group, in this church, in this community, in this town? So this is sometimes what I do when I'm trying to help churches or families find a care culture. I ask people to identify the group or the relational values that will create care community. What do they think makes a care community? And then gather all these ideas on sticky notes and arrange them. So all the different ideas people have shared about what helps them, what is a caring space for them, we can gather together and look at together and say, these are the values that we want to have here. How will we do this? What will that look like? And then explore the church, the, the group's shared values, study them together explore what the Bible says about them, explore even what research says about them, because research today is highlighting many wonderful things about values and character strengths and positive emotions and gratitude and wonder and things like this. So study them, explore them, so that everyone understands what these values mean for this group. What does this look like for us? How do we do um, mourning with those who mourn. How do we do encouragement together? How do we do acceptance when people are different? How will we do that? How will we show that? How will we make this care culture tangible in our midst? And then list practical ways these values could be lived out in the group. So how will we show thanks to each other? Maybe we can send texts or notes or letters or tell each other. Um, send funny kind of messages about gratitude, find creative ways to share your, your thank yous. So think about each of those values and think about all the different creative ways that you could make them happen in your group. Be creative together. So I'm sure in your groups you have lots of people who love all kinds of creativity. Encourage them. Make videos, posters, poems, songs, write about, explore, and uh, visualize these different values so that we can learn more about them by the different ways that we see them and experience them and express them. And when your room is surrounded by these creative um, pictures and artwork celebrating these values. New people coming into that group can see what you have already done, um, what, what the posters say about how we do this for one another, why it's important. Make it fun, make it uh, inspiring so that people are surrounded with the values that help to sustain a care culture and we don't forget what they are because this can inspire the group to keep going. And when new people come into the group, explain the care culture to them, explain how you work together to show care for one another and ask them, and what would you like to contribute to this? What are your ideas for our care culture? What can we do differently to accommodate your needs for care so that you feel cared for here with us? And so people realize they also have a voice in creating this care culture. So I wonder what other ideas you have for growing the care culture amongst the young people in your church. How can you explore the values of the, the care, the kingdom values of the care culture so that your young people are really filled with them and inspired by them and see the amazing power of creating this very different culture of care that is so different from the hurting, broken, uh, society around them. And what will happen if your young people grasp the vision for this care culture? How will they live in your church? What will they do differently when they are living in a care culture that they want to share with others? How will they then care for the people in your church? And will the other people catch the vision for care culture? How will it spill out from your community into others? And how can you take this care culture 
and spread it wide in your community, finding pockets of brokenness and hurt, taking those amazing values and investing in situations where you can make a loving difference, where your youth group can bring a tangible, three-dimensional picture of God's love into the broken communities where you are. People can see God at work, hear him at work, feel him, taste him, and just experience him through the way that your youth group may care for those in the community. There are some things that we can do as leaders to help support and sustain a care culture in our young people in our churches. I believe we need to train youth, especially in the skills for healthy relationships, because there are so many unhealthy relationships. I think this needs to be a real priority in our ministries, that we help our young people to have healthy relationships, because they, are, they hear and see so many broken pictures of relationships around them. And when we give them the skills, they will then know how to care better for others. Teach them about compassion, power in their lives. Teach them how to manage their conflicts so that they can help people um, become united and not broken apart. Teach them those skills. When I was working in Scotland, I worked a little bit with the Scottish Centre for Conflict Resolution, which was run by the Cyrenians, a Christian-based organisation. And they were also influencing another group, and they trained eight-year-old children to be um, peer mediators in their schools. So school children who were having a bit of an argument together would come to their eight-year-old classmates who had been trained, and they would sit down with this couple of kids that were having a problem, and they would help them to, to mediate, to talk through uh, what was wrong, what, how they were hurt, what their hopes were, and find a way to reconnect. And as they grew up, I talked to a 16-year-old who'd been trained in that years before, and he said, my life is so much happier as a teenager because I know how to manage my conflicts well. He said, you know what? I even helped sort out my parents' conflicts. And he said, my life is much better because I know how to bring peace rather than to have conflicts and fights. It can be really helpful if you have a bigger group to divide them into smaller care groups. Because sometimes if you're all trying to care for 20 or 30 people, it's, it's too much. People can get lost in that. So really tiny care groups of three, four, five people means they can look out for each other better and not just get lost in the, in the bigger group. So make sure there are little, little tiny clusters that can care and look out for each other and help you if any of them are having any issues. And maybe each group might have a, a leader or a spokesperson that comes back to you if they're getting stuck. But if people are just having to care for three or four other people, it's a bit easier. And then involve your group in projects that care for people in the wider community. Help them to see what compassion looks like. The compassion gets its hands dirty, that it looks for needs, that it listens for them, sees them, and says, what can I do to help? And listens to the person who is needing the help so that what they do matches the needs of the person. Compassion is an incredible power that we can share through our care communities. And there's an amazing book called Awakening Compassion at Work. And I think it should be called Awakening Compassion at Church because it's a, such a powerful book about how we create caring and compassionate communities. And so involve them in projects of care so they learn the skills, they see and they feel the benefits of caring for others. It's quite useful to make sure that you allocate someone who is keeping an eye on the group, who sees if someone isn't turning up very often, or someone has slipped away into a corner, or someone is looking sad or worried or you know, is not mixing in so well. So if you have someone who's looking out for those people while you're doing a bigger activity, they can perhaps go alongside them and say, hey, are you okay, do you want to talk? and just pick up the people that might be just on the edges of your group. Because quite often young people will just kind of stop coming or move aside and not really communicate and mingle with others. So make sure that people don't feel left out. Um, I'm an, actually an introvert and sometimes I just want to go in the kitchen and hide and do the dishes for a bit. 
Um, so that might be fine, just find out. If that's where you want to be and that's your happy place, then you know, let people go and do that. But make sure no one is alone who doesn't want to be alone. Then obviously use your social media to stay connected with the group and make sure that the social media is used to care, connect, and share positive emotions and not messages that will hurt, tear down, discourage, abuse. Make sure you have some good caring values that manage how the group communicates in that way. And make sure you get to know the people on one-to-one -one, um, conversations so that they come to trust you. You're there to listen to their ups and downs. You understand what's going on in their life when they've got exams, when they're stressed, so that you can match the care to the needs in their life. It's useful to have trusted leaders of both genders so that any young person that's feeling troubled can go to someone they feel comfortable with and talk to if they have a need. And be aware if you see that someone might need some special care. You might not know what to do. You're not there to solve all the problems. The Good Samaritan took the, the injured man to an inn where he would be better cared for than on the back of his donkey. And know there is support groups and the resources where you are for young people's mental health, um, young people's um, physical health, maybe their sexual health too. Know where to point them when they're having an issue. Be ready to go with them if they need some, com some company in that visit. So know your support networks around and help your people to access them well. And maintain healthy boundaries around your caring for others. And let others care for you too. Don't be such a big carer that your heart goes uncared for. Make sure that you are being cared for, you are being topped up. Sometimes when I'm feeling, I'm traveling and I need to be topped up, my husband isn't there. Um, this is just what I do, it's maybe a bit weird. But I just imagine that I'm sitting in God's lap and he's <coughs> giving me a big hug. If I'm distressed, sometimes I imagine that he puts me over his shoulder like a baby, pats me on the back and goes, there, there, Karen. You just cry out. You just can hit me if you like and beat my chest with your little angry hands. Um, I'm just here to love you until you settle down. And, and when I, my heart needs filling up and there's nobody else there, God is more than capable of filling my heart up. And I believe we, we need to keep going to God to have our hearts filled up with his love, to immerse ourselves in the passages of scripture about his love, to look for his love everywhere it is around us. God is loving you thousands of different ways every day and most of the time we just take it for granted and walk past it. Don't. Um, just absorb it, be in awe of it, notice it and hold it and hang on to it and fill yourself up with it so you can then share love with others. Um, so here are some ideas. You can have weekly group check-ins, just these little things where people share together in the group so you realize what their joys are, their sadnesses, their challenges, what filled them with wonder, what surprised them, <coughs> a prayer request they had. These are just little things that you can do to open up conversations. And then as a leader, believe. Believe that creating a caring community is an important responsibility of yours. You're there to help shape this care culture. Explore what care culture means to the group and keep exploring it. The ideas may change and grow and make space for that. Um, a couple of years ago when it was New Year's, I thought, God, what should I, what should I strive for this year? You know, I know it's no use making New Year's resolutions. And as I was praying about that, it came to me, ask that your picture of my love might be expanded. I said, wow. That's awesome. And so that was my goal, and that is still my goal, that my picture of God's love will be continually expanded. And the more that that has happened, the more capacity I have to love. And it's incredible. And this understanding of God's expanding love will go on for eternity. It doesn't stop because God's love is without limits, and the study of eternity will be His love. So look out for those who might need extra care. Listen for expression of needs underneath the words. They may not tell you what they need. Listen carefully for those who need encouragement, comfort, support, and just some appreciation, or to feel they're special to you. Um, listen for their needs and meet them. Be curious, ask them what they need the most, and respond and express your care in practical and generous ways. 
I want you to imagine that next year your youth group wins a competition for the most caring youth group in your town. Can you imagine that? That you're going to be presented and the mayor's going to present your youth group with a trophy for being the most caring youth group. What will you and your team do between now and next year to make this trophy a reality? And what will be stopping you? What's in your way of becoming a caring community that cares for others? What are the obstacles that you need to overcome? And I want you to imagine, imagine like a soul. And imagine is one of my bosses, Daniel Dudar's favorite words, just imagine. Because when we imagine, our thinking is expanded, our hearts are expanded, our wonder is expanded beyond the little bit that we see and we have new ideas. And God's love is pouring down on us all the time. He's just showering us with love. He's extravagant. Let us not be umbrellas, holding umbrellas over people's heads so they can't experience God's love. Let us be funnels that catch as much of God's love as possible, wide open, and then concentrate that love, pour it just into the places that most need to experience his love, the hurting places of this world. Because when we do that, God's love becomes visible and tangible everywhere we go, and then everyone will know that we are Christians by our love. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved Father God, we pray that out of your glorious riches you may strengthen us with your spirit in our inner being, so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. And we pray that by being rooted and established in love, we may have the power, together with all your beloved children, to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. And may our experience and understanding of your incredible love be expanded here and now and throughout all eternity. And may our love abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that we can discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And we praise you because you can do immeasurably more than all we can ever ask or imagine because of your power that is at work within us. And may you be glorified but by the way that we live out your love and practice your care culture in every relationship and every community. This is our humble and earnest prayer. Through Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>